Hi. For some time now, I've been interested in developing a flipped classroom format for my critical thinking course. And this semester, I've been developing the online lecture videos to do just that. And I thought you might be interested in seeing what tools I've been using and how I've been using them, just in case you're interested in developing a flipped classroom format for your courses as well. And I figured, what better way to um, show you what tools I've been using and what techniques I've been using than to actually utilize those very tools and those very techniques. So first, um, let me talk a little bit about the basic tools that I've been using. Of course, I imagine that there's all sorts of other tools or all sorts of different ways to use the tools than just the way that I'm using them. But this will give you some sense of where you might start or give you some ideas uh, the first thing to notice, I've been using um, this screen recorder, and what it does is it just records everything that's happening on my computer screen. And there's ways to modify just how much of the computer screen you want that recorder to record. So you can make it a smaller window or a larger window. Right now I have it as a full screen. So that's one thing thing that I've been using to make the videos. So all my videos come from what's going on on my computer screen. The other major tool that I've been using um, is this cam, this webcam, so that from time to time I can pop up and I can talk to my students as if I was face to face so that they have a face to look at to try to make it a little bit more engaging for them. The other major tool that I've really been using um, is one that Joey had brought up in a previous department meeting. And this is the app Explain Everything. This app is a particularly neat app. There's all sorts of things that you can do with it. And what I'm going to show you right now is an example of what, uh, just a taste of what a lecture might look like, an online lecture video might look like. So I could be teaching my students about Venn diagramming and you'll notice that I would say something then about how um, in our diagramming, when we shade an area, what we're representing or what we're saying is that nothing exists in that area. Or when we put an X in an area, what we've committed ourselves to is that there's at least one thing that exists in that area. So I would tell students, for instance, you'll notice that we have one circle a, A could stand for any sorts of category, so maybe it's the category of cats. And if it's the category of cats, then all of our cats that exist belong somewhere in this circle A. Then we have circle B. B might be the category of mammals. And again, if something is a mammal, we're going to find it in category B. And importantly, we see that there's this area where circle A and circle B overlap. And that's the place where we find things that are both cats and mammals. So if we're interested then in developing or diagramming a statement, a categorical proposition. So for instance, the proposition that all A are B all cats are mammals. Then looking at our diagram, in order to represent that, we need to shade out the area of A that lies outside of B. That is the area where you would have cats that are not mammals. And by shading this, we're saying that we're taking this away. And then what you'll notice is that after the shading, we still have a part of A that's left, but it's completely inside of area B. So here's where we have our cats. And notice since it's entirely inside of B, all of our cats are in fact mammals. So as you can see, I've been using the Explain Everything app as a sort of PowerPoint-like program 
where I can develop slides of lecture notes for the students to look at and take notes over. And at the same time, I can use it as a virtual whiteboard. And in those two respects, I've found the Explain Everything app to be a very useful tool. So those are the, the three basic tools that I've been using to develop my online lecture videos. First, I've been using this screen capturing or screen casting program. Second, I've been using a webcam um, so that I can look at the students face to face as it were. And I've been using Explain Everything as a sort of PowerPoint slash virtual whiteboard device so that I can relate the information to the students. Now what I'd like to do is give you a very quick overview of the screen capturing um, program that I've been using, which is called Camtasia. So let's look at that. So here's Camtasia Studio. This is where I do the recording and the editing of the videos. So the first thing to show is in this upper left hand corner, we have the record the screen button. And unsurprisingly, if you click that button, it will record the screen of your computer. And you can adjust just how much of the screen uh, is being recorded, but that is its function. Now, when you do a recording and once you've stopped it and decided to save that recording, you'll get these pieces of media. So here's tutorial 1.1, I've labeled it, and then tutorial 1.2. So I've already made two clips for the video that you've been watching right now. And those get dropped down here where I can modify them. I can move the clips around if I want. But it drops them down in this area. And this is where I can do the editing. So if you'll see, I've got this little marker on this timeline. As I move the marker, it goes through the video and audio that I've recorded. That way I can locate the areas in which I want to make edits or add little other interesting features that Camtasia allows you to add. So to give you a quick sense of what you might do in the editing area, in between these two clips, there's going to be, you'll notice that there's going to be some dead space. So let me start the video here. I hit space bar. It's going to go through the video and that's going to let me know just where I want to make my edits. And notice since it's entirely inside of B, all of our cats are in fact mammals. So as you can see, I've been using... Uh, so of course, having all that dead air is very unpleasant. Um, it's kind of awkward. So we can remove it. So if I place, say, maybe the cursor around here, I'm just guessing I would um, play this over and over again until I found just where it sounded good to me, sounded natural. I can come to this area where it says cut. I click that. It cuts out that area and moves or deletes it, right? But then moves this um, second piece of media right next to the first piece. And now let's take a listen. All of our cats are in fact mammals. So as you can see, I've been using the explain it. Fantastic, that's much more natural, sounds a lot better. So that's one thing that we can do in terms of editing is cutting out the portions that we don't like. But there's all sorts of things that you can do. I'm not going to go um, into detail with them, but I'll point them out. There's callouts where you can add visual things or text um, into, you can add it into the video. You can zoom and pan around in the video. So if you want to focus on certain areas. You're, there's different things that you can do with the audio levels, or you can remove some of the background uh, noises. There's a, a feature for that. Transitions, if you want to, um, you know, have it fade out to black uh, before you move on to another piece. You can highlight your cursor or do some other effects. And um, I'll skip over here to this last one, quizzing. There's a way to introduce quizzes into your um, into your videos. Not only that, there's 
a way to produce your video with quizzes in them such that you can import it to Blackboard and when the students play that video and take the quiz, you can record, you can record their score into the gradebook of Blackboard. So it can do that automatically for you. That's not something that I've done yet. It's something that I plan on incorporating in the future, but that's a pretty interesting feature as well. Speaking of producing, once you have covered all the material that you want in your clips and you've completed all the editing and you have added all the different sorts of features like quizzes or whatever to the video, then it's time to come up to this button where it says produce and share. And that's what's going to get the rendering process underway so that all those clips get integrated into one product one, and that'll be your finished product. So we click this button and it brings up this wizard and there's all sorts of options that you can pick from depending what kind of format of the video that you want. So there's MP4 formats. There's also these other formats that you can make. You can also have it shared directly to YouTube or to Google. Uh, what I've been doing so far is picking the MP4 option and I don't have it shared automatically to YouTube. In my experience, doing it that way takes way longer than just having the video rendered and then uploading it to YouTube yourself. And that's what I've been doing um, thus far in, in terms of sharing it to the student students. I have the video created, I then upload it to YouTube, and once I've uploaded it to YouTube, I come into Blackboard and I created a section called Lecture Videos. Then I go to the build web, the build content and do the create web link. I give the video a name and then I just put the YouTube website, the YouTube URL into this area, submit and voila, the students now have access to that YouTube video. Um, in the future, I want to start toying around with producing the videos in such a way that it gets that it can be imported into Blackboard so that those quizzes can be graded and imported directly into the gradebook. But I haven't done that yet. All right, so that gives you a sense of the tools that I've been using to develop online videos for my critical thinking course. And um, it also gives you a sense of the screencasting program that I've been using to create those videos, Camtasia. But I, I figure you're probably also interested in the cost that was involved. So what was the overhead um, for me to get this started? Well, first there's the Camtasia program itself. And it ran $169 to get that. And that's at the education pricing. That's $30 off from the, the regular price. And I will say that in comparison to some other programs that are available, that's rather steep. There, there are cheaper alternatives um, that you can look into. The reason why I went ahead and bought Camtasia is because in comparing what it can do and also um, how user-friendly it seemed in comparison to other alternatives, <clears throat> it just seemed the way for me to go. I'm not particularly tech savvy, so I wanted to be sure and feel comfortable that whatever I bought, I was gonna be able to use use well and I have been. Um, after playing around with Camtasia a little bit I, I feel pretty comfortable with it. It didn't take very long to, to pick it up. All right aside from that I also um, didn't want to just use the camera that's built into my laptop because it has a really grainy picture and shopping around I found that lots of people seem to think that the C920 HD Pro webcam from Logitech was pretty good. So I went that route, I've been happy with it, and that's uh, ran me $100. But I think I've gotten decent video quality out of it. And I also didn't wanna use the microphone that's built into my laptop, <clears throat> um, just because I wanna make sure that the audio quality is good and, and it's relatively pleasant to listen to. So I ended up buying the Blue Yeti, um, 
based on what I've looked at, it seems to be the best uh, USB microphone out there that you can get. There is an alternative that's second best and that's cheaper. That's I think it's called Snowball, so that might be something that you look into as well. But this um, runs full price at $129. I was able to find it on eBay. You might be able to find some of these other things on eBay too, the uh, camera for instance, to save some money. Okay. Well, I, I hope you have found this video informative and thanks for watching.